as Nigeria's political parties prepare to do battle in the 2023 elections. There are growing concerns over the quality of aspirants that have indicated interest in competing for the presidency and governorship positions. For many Nigerians, the current crop of presidential and governorship hopefuls, comprising mostly the old guard, do not inspire hope or confidence among the electorate. They have been blamed for the nation's lack of economic progress, widespread insecurity and poverty, as well as the ethno-religious tensions that bedevil the country. Critics are of the view that if the political parties present themselves as uh, candidates or present them as candidates in the next general election, voter turnout could decline to record low due to voter apathy. The solution is for political parties to fit candidates that are visionary, energetic, and are ready to initiate new ideas and policies that will engender development, peace, and unity. Now joining us to discuss the state of the nation's democracy and the leadership quest as Nigerians prepare to head to the polls in 2023 is Najatu Muhammad, a rights activist and member of the ruling All Progressives Congress. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Muhammad, and good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I mean, you listen good to... Good morning. Yeah. You listen to that uh, introduction. We are all concerned about 2023, and I've listed some of the concerns that have been expressed uh, by Nigerians. The quality of candidates that are showing up. Some people even say, well, they are not even sure that election uh, will be uh, credible enough. Uh, some people even say we have issues uh, with the uh, Electoral uh, Act Amendment Bill as forwarded uh, to the president of Nigeria. Do you have any concerns about the 2023 general elections yes, of, and what are those? Uh, every Nigerian, I think, that is in... Hello? Can you hear me? Please go Every ahead. Nigerian, in his rightful sense, uh, must be concerned. Must be concerned, not just because of the caliber of people that have read their heads now for the presidential election, but because even the elections itself, the so-called democracy that we are supposed to be operating, is really not far from being democratic. It's far from being democratic because if you take democratos, which is a Greek word meaning uh, people's power, then how powerful have the Nigerian be? If you have a situation where you don't really uh, partake in the selection of the candidate in the first place, and then after the selection of the candidates, we know how to use power is being usurped in this country. There are four main ways of usurping power. I don't say elections because mainly you have the money bags, you have the police, you have uh, 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 the other instruments of coercion, and then you have the money bags. At the end of it, you have the courts to enforce this. So you can begin to talk of democracy in which people do not even have the right or the know-how. They don't partake in policy makings. Democracy is a system in which uh, policy making that, that affects the lives of people are done by the people either through selection or through their representatives. If you take the representatives that we have now in the country, say the National Assembly or the State Assemblies, the State Assemblies are virtually made up of the house boys or house girls of the governors. They don't say anything. They, they, just, they, just, they are just followers. of. They just endorse anything the governor brings. And this National Assembly, as it is presently constituted, is the worst National Assembly we have had in this country. They are supposed to check the, the excesses of, of the president. They are supposed to formulate laws that are beneficial beneficial to their constituencies, but they just sit. It's just about how they make money and how to please and appease the president. They just are waiting for the president to say jump and they say how high. So even the democracy is in question, quite honestly. If you are talking of the rights of people, of the rights of people to be involved in governance, there is no such thing as democracy as it is presently constituted. But let me go a little bit further. Most of the people that are rearing their heads today, you hear about, first you hear about power shift, you hear about restructuring, you hear about uh, the North conceding power to, to, to the South, whichever part of the... Now, is that democratic? 
it is lazy. People who are calling for that are lazy. They know that they are politically irrelevant. They cannot make bridges. They are further, further fragmenting the country. You know, they are going, taking us back to, 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 to regionalization of the country, the balkanization of the country. For what? And you, you get to understand that their only credential is that they have stolen so much money and they belong to a particular ethnic gr group. Is that, is that democratic? Do people have a choice? And the whole lot of them do not have even the interest of the country. They are not even looking at the issues, the dire issues of insecurity, of a total breakdown of our economy, of the youth that constitute over 75% of the, the population of this country that are, have been abused, made redundant, they are not nurtured, they are not even part of any kind of, uh, uh, they are not even in, in governance. So in a situation where the, the youth, who are actually the energy source, who are actually the, 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 they are the gauge through which you can judge any country. You know their integrity, their intelligence, their wisdom is what gauges a country. But if you have a situation where over 80% of your youth are ill-educated, they have been turned into vagabonds, they are not even respected, by either the government or the so-called elders, they don't even think in terms of their tomorrow. Because posterity is dependent on the, posterity is, is the youth, actually. So when no one is looking at the situation of the youth of this country, when no one cares, when the youth have just been turned into cannon fodder for politicians, then you cannot talk of democracy. There is no such thing as democracy, as democracy should be in the country. Thank you, Hachia. Let's talk about solutions. Like you said now with the youth, there have been calls. I don't even know if they're calls or just lip service about a generational shift to create a more inclusive government, including the youth and also the issue of age in this country with regards to the president and his age. I, I suppose the correlation really, the, the discussion should be about health, not age. Because you recall that late President Omar Yaradua was not old. He became president at 56 and he passed on at 59. So it's really about health. But there's that conversation now about a generational shift. But what exactly is being done by our political parties to ensure that generational shift? Are they just saying it because it sounds like the right thing to say without actually no, meaning no, it? No, 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 they, no, they, no, no, they, they don't mean it. You see, there's so much, so much lies around this thing. You know, they say this, they have too many tongues in their mouth, our Nigerian politicians. And by the way, there's no difference between the AP, APP or uh, APC or the PDP, quite honestly, because they are just people that are zigzagging from one party to another to suit their own interests. There's no ideological difference between them is the difference is that of a logo. This is a broom and this is an umbrella. That is all the, 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 the difference. However, coming up to talk ab about the solution, you see, the youth in this country have so much in terms of numbers, but their biggest problem is a crushing inferiority complex. It's a crushing inferiority complex that has been nurtured by the same people in government the same people that have governed this country for decades are still the same circle of people that are, 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 are at the helm of affairs, one way or the other. When uh, um, 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 Gawan, Gawan was make, made uh, the head of state at 36. In fact, Murtala, 30, uh, Gawan was 32, Murtala was 36. The Sadownas were killed at 56. But today, someone at the age of 56 will still be referred to as youth because they want to keep them in bondage. For so long as they accept this bondage, they will never be free. The country will never be free. The country will not move. And you see, you also have to look at things from a different perspective. You can be a young man, but what interest do you really represent? You have to look at the interest of the young people or the young person who is aspiring to be president. I mean, age is not just it. It's not just about your age, but what interest do you represent? There are governors that are quite young, that want to be a, 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 a president, but go to their states. They are just absentee governors that have not done anything. That The only thing that made them what they are today are the bullion vamps that, that, that was put 
in their houses for so-called election. So it's not really about age, but the interest that that person represents. I don't give a hoot about who becomes president for so long as it's somebody that I believe can deliver this country from the, from the evil, from the stench that we are in right now. So you see, madam, it's not just so much about age. It's also about the interests you represent. However, there is nowhere on earth in which the youth are not recognized like in Nigeria. If you take China, for instance, China is what it is today for its youth. They have the highest number of, of, of mil young millionaires on earth. Why? Because the government made a concerted effort in terms of education, the manner of education that is given, and, and, and you know, the, the nurturing of the, 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 the youth. You know, so in Nigeria, there is no such thing as good education. If you want your child to go to a good school, you have to pay through your nose. There is virtually total breakdown in the educational system in this country. And nobody is making an effort to do anything. So all those that are talking about the youth are talking about them because they need to use them this year for electioneering. You know, the elections have turned, is, is just about uh, hooliganism and money. That's all. There are no issues discussed. Divide and rule through tribe and religion. What manner of democracy is this? So our youth are not even part of the equation. They are not part of the arithmetic. Nobody is considering them because if they get to understand what they are, if they get to understand through education, through skill acquisition, every gadget you see here was one time, you know, invented by the youth because their brains are highly active. They have so much energy. But in Nigeria, no one is talking about them because no one does power to you on a platter of gold. So the, uh, the youth of this country must wake up to their responsibilities. Nobody will dole you power. No. It's just like when women say that uh, they will give us that. It's crazy. It's, it's not true. So the youth owe it a responsibility to themselves and to the, uh, to, 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 to the country. You, to, to salvage the, the situation. I mean, when you take old people that can hardly walk, can hardly think, you know, they are what, this way, of, they, they have dementia, incoherent. I mean, there's nothing. Power has like become, in Nigeria, it's a personal property. Governance is personal. So it's just, you are just there because you want to service your ego, because you want to loot, loot what is left of the, of, of the treasuries of the country. So we have to look beyond that. We have to be able to galvanize our youth. We have to be able to give them direction. Like minds must come together and stop this nonsense of this party, that party. No, it's an, about an ideological difference. It's about... A, a difference that will move the country forward. Miss Mohammed. All these things. You know, when Ms. they start talking of ethnicity or... Ms. or, or Ms. Yes, Mohammed, sir. yeah, we have very limited time. If you could, yes, keep, if you could keep the responses oh, okay. short and straight to the point. Two things. Okay, sure. I, I thought I had you okay. talking about the excesses of uh, the president. And when I was introducing you, I introduced yes. you as a cat carry member of the All Progressives Congress. Yes, it's very unusual for an APC member yes. to come on television and talk about the excesses of the president of Nigeria. What are those excesses? And secondly, what are your thoughts on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill that has been re-amended and sent back to the president for his assent? Quickly. We are trying to manage time. Look, let me tell you, the ex some of the excesses of the president is his failure to really lead as he should lead. Being a cat carrying member of the of APC doesn't make me less a Nigerian. My loyalty is first and foremost to Nigeria and not to the party. And my concern is how to move the country forward. The president has failed in so many ways, like it or not. I'm the first person in this country to campaign for Muhammad Buhari. But I cannot also shy from the fact that he has failed the country in so many ways. Or there is not a single promise that he made to this country that he has fulfilled. And we just sit and, and, and pretend that we are, we are APC, so we won't say these things. 
And another problem is that he, they are beginning to gag the, the press. The press is the only way in which Nigerians can get their views aired. And the press is the only way. In fact, Muhammad Buhari went as far as saying that he is expecting advice from the, from the press. Now, why, why is the press being gagged? So these are failures that we must see what happened in, in, to Vision FM. You know, before simply saying that there is corruption in the NIA. And there is corruption in the NIA. So, and, but, but what they are saying is that they, they, they lumped up the NIA and the, past, the, 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 head, the head of the NIA. The head of the NIA, we all know, they, 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 the commission, the Baba Kingibe commission that brought him into office, was at, he was the secretary. He was the secretary, and that particular uh, committee co or commission uh, that was created by the, the president actually made a recommendation. The recommendation was that there should be a, 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 an overhaul of the, of the NIA. One of the recommendations was that the person that should head the place must be somebody that is a senior director. This particular Mr. Rifai that is heading the place, who was the secretary of that commission, actually was eased out of that commission because he flunked the deputy director to director uh, examinations three times he failed. Having failed, he was eased out of the NIA. But the same uh, commission that brought he, the, in which he was a secretary now made him the, president, the, the, the head of the NIA. That is one. Number two. The, the, the Ikoi gate, the money is $43 million that was found somewhere in Ikoi. We need to know for saying that these are the resources of the people of this country. All the press was saying, all that M M Vision FM was saying is wh why did they violate the same, uh, 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 the same conditions that they, they set up? What happened to those monies? That was all. So for that, they were gagged. They have, they have been levied $5 million, and the program, which is the most popular program in the North I, that I know, has been, uh, has been suspended for six months. So how do you get democracy in, in, under these conditions? So because I'm a, APC, I just, because, you know, people must understand that what goes around comes around. If, you don't, if, if something is happening to your friend and you, you turn the other, then it, it, it will always come back. So, sir, what I'm thinking is that, like minds should come together and say no to this tyranny. We must say no to the pillage of the resources of this country. We must say no to this extreme corruption that has completely crippled the economy and has, has taken the country hundreds of years back. This country has never had such insecurity. It has never had such the plunder and the pillage of our resources since slave trade. So what is wrong with us? So because I'm APC, I just turn the other eye? No, I will not. I asked you about the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, uh, whether your recommendation is that you the see, president should sign it or the, not. The, you, you know, the, the Electoral Act is neither here nor there, quite honestly. And we know that anything that is people's friendly. You see, what, 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 what the National Assembly is always doing is that they put their own personal interest first and foremost. They put their interest, their re-election first, and then the country on how to manipulate the country is next. I really don't expect the, the, any kind of major difference from what we are obtaining today. I don't expect any kind of difference, quite honestly. Right, I want to take you back to what you said about the Vision FM um, story. I want to approach it from a different perspective. They've been fined 5 million naira and have said that they might have difficulties paying that fine, which could result in them having to close shop. Now, we're talking about radio stations and the TV station, so hundreds of jobs are on the line. I'd like you to address that in view of the current crisis that we have with unemployment in this country, that a business has been attacked in this way? Well, if you hear the president, president correctly, at one point he said there are no vacancies anywhere. That was what he said. There are no vacancies anywhere. So when there are no vacancies anywhere, and you go out of your way 
the few vacancies that we have, like Vision FM that have hundreds of staff, and you lay them off, are you not increasing the already dire in situation of insecurity? Because man must eat. The reason why you have so much insecurity in the country, and particularly in the North, is due to injustice. It's due to injustice. Nobody is just to the people that they are supposed to. They usurp everything. They ignore everyone. It's just about themselves. Loot, loot, loot. That's all they do. So I'm not surprised if they don't care about how many people uh, uh, are, are losing their jobs because of uh, the, the, the situation in, in Vision FM. Uh, they don't care. But they have to understand that the people of this country have permanent rights over their leaders. Dead or alive, we have permanent rights over our leaders. And it's the responsibility of the people of this country to say no to this kind of thing. Because you are not ruling over the furniture and the chairs around you. You are ruling over a set of, of, of hundreds of millions of people. So if, you, if the, those hundreds of millions of people, if they become dormant, is there a problem? Because they allow these things to happen. To, to, to keep quiet is, is, to, is to accept. Why are the majority of the people of this country accepting? Why are the elites, who has the responsibility to voice out these things, see crime, crime and criminality and tyranny through a narrow prison of tribe or religion? That in itself is fraudulent. Why is it that when, when a crime or a problem is happening in the South, the Northerners will say, ah, no, it's not our problem. When it comes to the South, no, it's not, the North will say it's not our problem. I think that is very wrong. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mohammed, uh, for joining us this morning on The Morning Show here at Arise News. Thank you very much indeed.